Hey guys, welcome to the channel. The firmware update for the Pontus DAC released a couple of weeks ago. The version 1.4 was a huge success. A few customer feedback to us that they felt this latest firmware release version 1.4 in particular for the Pontus DAC is the best of both worlds. We released the version 1.3 a month earlier, uh, somewhere in April or March 2023, the travel energy it might be a little bit too much for some of the system. Some of the customer requested to roll back to the original firmware where they felt it is a little bit warmer, it has more body and it is more organic sounding for the original firmware. So in contrast, the version 1.3 has too much details, too much trouble in some of the system, not all. I should mention this. Not all the system has this phenomenon, but some of the customer did feedback that the version 1.3 is a little bit too detailed and too bright in the sense that they do not like it as much as compared to the original firmware. So the firmware team or the firmware update team and us has been working with Dinal Frips to mix the version 1.3 and the original firmware and came out with the version 1.4 for the Pontus DAC and I think it is a huge success. Customer who disliked the version 1.3 like the version 1.4 a lot and I think this uh, I would say the best of both world FPGA firmware and we finally get there with the latest version. Now the good news is the same technique is applied to the Terminator Plus and the Terminator 2 DAC. We delay the release of this Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus firmware was really because we want to get it right at once. In your first trial, of the firmware update, you are going to get a box fix firmware, a better sound quality firmware with the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. We do not want you to go through the same thing that happened for Pontus DSC. Version 1.3 to some of the customer was, uh, I wouldn't want to use this very strong word, but uh, I'm a frank guy. I, want, I just want to be fully transparent to you. To some of the customer was a disappointment. Some of the customer updated the version 1.3, it was too bright, it is too digital sounding to their system and they are disappointed with the sound quality. But we acted quickly. We want the customer to feel that this firmware update project initiated by Windshine Audio together in collaboration with Dina Frips, the whole purpose and the objective is to bring your current, the DSC that you have the older generation Pontus, the Pontus 2, or even the Pontus 12 to the current up-to-date firmware with bug fix again, new feature, as well as good sound quality that Dinafrips is known for. So we added dual wire AES EBU support for the Pontus DAC with higher resolution that up to PCM384 as well as DSD128. So these are the features that we added to the Pontus DAC as we revise the firmware to give you a better sound quality as well as bug fix. So the customer is a little bit upset that we released the firmware hmm, way too fast. The firmware for the Pontus was released in somewhere, somewhere in mid of March or closer towards uh, end of March. And we released another one in May. It is like a two month span between the firmware release and some of the customer felt that we released the firmware in a way too much, uh, way too fast manner that they cannot catch up and confuse with the firmware update release whether they should go for the previous release or the latest release. Uh, there's no right and wrong. Uh, like I always mentioned in my previous video, if you're happy with the sound quality of the DIC as it is, you may not need to update the firmware. But again, 
the firmware update project that initiated by Windshine Audio and Dina Frips is to bring your deck to current status, up to date with some of the bug fix and new feature as well as what we believe the new sound quality that you might enjoy. So if the firmware update is manageable, we highly, highly recommend you to update the firmware. As you master the firmware update technique, you may always roll back to the original firmware that you might like better, and you may always try the new firmware, uh, in a way, give your system a new sound. Isn't that the fun part of having the capability and ability to update the firmware? In my humble opinion, it is a big yes. This brings up the value of Dynafrips DAC. This brings up the resale value of the Dynafrips DAC as well. The DAC can be kept in the original firmware or it can be updated to the latest FPGA firmware to make the deck up to date. Okay, enough sales talk for the FPGA firmware update, but that is really the objective behind the firmware update. We do not want to roll out something or make this overly complicated for you. Again, if you are happy with the sound quality of the DAC as it is, you do not need to update the firmware. Let's come back to this Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. What is in front of me is the Terminator Plus DAC. We released the DAC sometime in year 2021. So there are three versions of the FPGA chip used inside the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. Because we know that moving out the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus from the Hi-Fi rack it is a big job. This thing weighs about 20 kg. It is difficult to shift it up from the Hi-Fi rack. We, we know about this. Setting out of this huge base DAC is also a big challenge if you do not have a helping hand with you. So if you know the purchase date and the ship date of the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus from Windshine Audio to you, we may potentially tell the FPGA chip used inside the model and you do not, or I should say, you may not need to pop the cover open and show us the picture of the FPGA chip. But there's a bit of risk involved as we transit from one chip to another. The transition period is in the gray area where we may not be able to pinpoint the correct FPGA chip used inside the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus. If that's the case, we really need to trouble you to take the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus out from the Hi-Fi rack, pop the top cover open and share with us a chip or the interior of the DAC so that we can provide the correct firmware update tool to you. To do this is not extremely difficult, but that mitigates the problem of updating the wrong firmware to the DAC. Updating the wrong firmware to the DAC will definitely for sure break the DAC. We do not want that to happen to the DAC that weighs 20 kg. And I haven't talked about the worst part. The DSP module of this Terminator 2 or Terminator Plus is not user replaceable. I have to say it again. The DSP module is not user replaceable. So you cannot purchase a DSP module from us to replace it for the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. So if you know or if you are not sure the FPGA chip used inside the DAC or the information provided from you to us, we are unsure about the FPGA chip used inside the DAC, please we need to trouble you to remove the deck from the hi-fi rack, pop the top cover open and share with us a high resolution photo of this interior of the DAC and we will provide you the correct firmware update too. So what if the firmware update failed for the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus DAC? This deck needs to be shipped to our service point and our service point will update the FPGA firmware for you and return the deck to you. You need to cover some fee as well as the shipping fee. So that's the risk involved. So if you do not want that to happen, and I think we should always recommend you to pop the top cover open if and only if we are not sure what is the FPGF chipped model in the deck. So to do this or to top, pop the top cover open is very straightforward. All you need is an Allen key, 
a 2.5 mm metric size Allen key. Remove two screws at the back and you'll be pop you'll be able to pop top cover open. Let me do, just do it very quickly in front of the camera for you. This is the original Terminator Plus DAC that's with me for quite some time. Let me just flip it to the back and you can see uh, what are the screws at the back to identify the correct screw to remove. Right, again, at my angle, I can't potentially see this. I will need to bend my head. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, there's one here and there's one, another one here. So these two are the screw to remove by using this 2.5 mm Allen key screwdriver. Just turn it counterclockwise and you notice the screw I'm using for this Terminator Plus in, is in gold color. Uh, this is the identifier of the deck, belongs to our demo in my demo room. So uh, it's more of an identifier rather than a hi-fi trick or hi-fi tweak. Uh, I don't quite believe in upgrading the screw, but uh, for aesthetic purpose or for identification purpose, I like my stuff to look good. Okay, with this two screw removed, you'll be able to pop this top cover open very easily. So this is how the top cover looks like. It's pretty heavy, so just put it aside safely and don't knock anything precious, or rather don't knock the top cover as well. So I will just move it around and show you what's inside this Terminator Plus DAC. So as I mentioned, the Terminator Plus was originally released in somewhere in 2021. There are three FPGA version. Uh, in reality, there are two. One is the EP4CE6, no, 22E, EP4CE and 22F. These two are the chips model used inside the Terminator Plus DAC. Uh, to, to describe it better, I'll uh, just flip this. Wow, it's heavy. Like that. And with my faithful pointer for my daughter, <laughs> with a little dinosaur on top. Uh, this was given from her to me to use it for my presentation. She thought this might be helpful. Okay. So this is a FPGA chip used inside this Terminator Plus. In this particular model, it is EP4CE22F. So this is how it looks like. Uh, why I say there are three different models is because uh, lately, in the latest production, there are some changes to the I2S input. One of the chip was removed and the, we call it the direct I2S input where the LVDS converter chip for the HDMI I2S as well as the LVDS RJ45 I2S was removed and the I2S is wired directly to this FPGA chips. So in total, for Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus, there are three variants. One is using 22E chip, the other one is using 22F chip with the LVDS to LV CMOS converter chip. I, I know it gets very technical and complicated, but please bear with me. And the latest production is 22F FPGA chip without the LVDS to LV CMOS uh, converter chip. So updating the firmware for the Terminal Plus, um, there are two risks. So the first one is if you have the 22E model and you updated 22F firmware, the unit will break. Vice versa, if you have the 22F model and you updated the 22E firmware, the unit will break. But what if, if you have the 22F model and you are unsure whether this unit comes with the LVDS to LV CMOS converter chip or not, updating the firmware of the 22F2 variant to the 22F FPGA chip will not break the DAC. The symptom that you will find when updating the wrong firmware to the 22F chip is that uh, some of the input do not have sound, but in particular the I2S input because the wrong um, chip or the wrong FPGA model uh, firmware is used that the I2S doesn't, um, doesn't respond to the signal because of the absence of the chip or the with the chip around. So by telling us the purchase date or the ship date of the DAC from Windshine Audio to you, we should be able to pinpoint the FPGA model used in the DAC as well as whether the DAC comes with the, F the LVDS chip or not. But if you are unsure about this or if you are unsure about this due to the great transition period from one chip to another, we will request you to take a photo of the interior of the DAC and we will provide the correct FPGA firmware update to for the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus to you. 
All right. Uh, again, I say, like I say, the FPGA is more or less matured as we work on the Pontus DAC. The version 1.4 was a huge success. Most of the customer are very happy with it. And we apply the same technique to the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus. And we will be applying this for the rest of the DAC, like the Ares or the Enyo DAC, the Venus, as well as the original Terminator. Okay, I think I have talked most of the stuff that I want to talk about in this video. If you like the content of my channel and if you like Mm, whatever I talk about and if you find my channel interesting do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time bye bye please do not drop